started. Hi, hello. Monday today, start of a new week, start of a new vlog. Still cutting up stickers, I'm gonna do my Inktober original update. Uh, I wanted to do it today, it's probably not gonna happen because I want to put a timer up so that everyone knows. Like just in case someone wants a specific original and they miss it or whatever. I don't know, I don't know how many people are gonna buy them but I want to set a timer and it's a bit late to do that today so I might try and do that tomorrow but I'm still cutting up stickers like you saw. <laughs> anyway, I'm just about to upload my sketchbook picture. Ah! I don't like this new Instagram update. <laughs> Yeah, because I completely forgot that I drew that spread, to be honest, and I never uploaded a picture of it. <laughs> I replied to a few emails this morning. I spent all the weekend working on my client project that I have going on at the moment. And yeah, just kind of getting little bits done here and there that I want to do. I have a post to make with Studio tomorrow, and I have no pictures taken, nothing ready, and no plans, so I need to do that today. I don't... I don't know what to do for it. Mm. Hello. Day. It's Tuesday today. I'm really annoyed because I was just going through my SD card to delete footage so that I could film more. And I just deleted a clip that I filmed this morning of the sky looking amazing when I woke up at like half seven. And I wanted to start the day with that clip and now I don't have it. <laughs> I'm so annoyed. My package from Knives Meow has just arrived and I am so excited. She sent this out and then it got sent back to her and then she resent it out. Oh, I'm so excited! I saw a little glassine bag. She gave me one of her little pads. We've got all the coonies. Coonie, coonie, coonie. Oh, it's real coonie. <laughs> oh my god. Little Halloween babies. Oh, thank you, Radia, for all of the stickers. Oh, and a froggy. Oh, I'm so excited. Thanks for being so cool, Ada. Thank you for being so cool. I'm gonna get to open the big one. These bags are real nice. I need to get me some of these. Okay, where we got? Oh, hang on. Whoa, that's a lot of writing. I'll be right back. She just wrote me the sweetest little note ever. Thank you so much. A little doodle of us at the bottom there. So cute. Oh my gosh, okay, whoa, she sent me lots of things. Okay, we got one of the new spooky sticker sheets, which I love. This zine got a little fucked up. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> oh, you didn't have to send me a zine. I love zines. I like the vibes of this zine. Oh, Radia, gorgeous print, the colours, whoa. Oh my god! <laughs> oh wow, oh wow, I love this so so much. I knew that she'd draw me an original because she told me. <laughs> but I didn't expect... I mean, I expected it to be adorable, obviously, but look! Me and a kitty! Could be any kitty, I'm gonna say it's Cosmo because he's all one colour. Oh, Radia, thank you so, so much. You really didn't have to. I am working on a drawing for you currently. It will be sent out to you as soon as possible. <laughs> oh, sent me a ghosty print as well. <gasps> Sorry, I, I love this print and I thought that this was just plain paper. She sent me one of her mushroom prints. I love these so much. 
Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm so excited. I love your work so much. Thank you for being so lovely. Um, and now I'm feeling like I really want to get my package ready to send you, her, Radia, if you're watching, her, if you're someone else. <laughs> thank you. It's my colours. <laughs> I have the best art friends. place for creative people to go and learn a new hobby or add to existing skills. They have classes on a whole different range of topics from cooking to interior design to freelancing. The classes are held by other very knowledgeable creatives who are kind enough to share their knowledge with us. I get a lot of questions on how to price your work. Um, this is something I still struggle with a bit myself. I wanted to suggest this class for you guys. This class is Pricing Your Work as a Freelancer by Peggy Dean. She talks about the numbers, she gives examples, and goes over pricing your products too. If you think you might benefit from that class, or there's something else that you're looking Doesn't to learn about, or to if you just want a new hobby, click the link in my description. The first thousand people to click the link for a limited time will get a trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. And after that, it's less than $10 a month for an annual membership. I personally love using Skillshare. I've learned a lot on there, I've taken a lot of classes, and every one of them has been beneficial in some way. I would definitely suggest checking it out if there's something you want to learn or just know more about. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. You guys are the best. And um, yeah, I probably finished the packing portion now, so it's my face, so hi. Um, Wednesday today, I've just been working on little bits on my computer. I made a font today. Check this out font i made that that was fun i'll i'll film the process for you in a minute well i'll just i'll show you how i did it i'll show you really quick how to do it but catnip did do a video on this which is how i found out so i'll leave a link to that in the description if you want a more detailed video on it but this is just this is the simple way so basically you go onto this website calligrapher.com go to templates you download a template you have to pay if you want like numbers and extra special characters otherwise this is all you get I might do a number one at some point, but for now, this was fine. So you just choose what you want, minimal English, download the template, get it as a PNG if you're gonna do it on Procreate like I did. If you're gonna print it out and do it by hand, to be fair, PNG will probably be fine too, I'm not really sure if you have to do it in separate layers, I don't think so. So this is what the template looks like. Just take it into Procreate, draw on all your letters like this. I also did a regular one, so I've got a regular one and an italic one. Then you just upload it, automatically clean. I don't really know what that means, but do it. <laughs> I'm guessing it gets rid of all the background stuff. So here you go, here's the font. You go down to add characters to your font, build font, name it something, build. 
then here you go this is a comparison between your font and other fonts so it's a little small so what you can do now what you do is you close that you go to edit font details bring the font size up i'd like to do like 127 ish a uh, little less letter spacing and a little more word spacing save build again There we go, there they all are. Size comparison, that's much better. And then you just click one of these. It downloads, you open it, and you click install. These will show up on Photoshop, uh, but they don't in Premiere Pro, so I'm not entirely sure what to do about that. I can get a couple of them in Premiere Pro, but like the apostrophes and stuff don't work, so I don't really know where that is. So you just click install, and then you can open it in anything that you have on your computer that uses fonts. I'm not gonna install it because I have it installed already. But yeah, simple as that. So, as uh, this week's gonna be quite busy drawing wise, I'm not entirely sure how much I'm gonna be able to film. So I thought it would be fun if we did a little Q&A now. Um, I asked on Instagram stories last night if you have any questions for me about freelancing or, you know, running an Etsy shop, Instagram, just like tips for beginners from a kind of beginner myself since I'm still very new to all of this. There is quite a few questions, so I will just answer as many as I can. I'll go to the bottom to start. First question, how do you stay motivated and manage your time well while self-employed? Uh, daily planners are a really good tool uh, to use to help you stay on track. You write down what you need to do and you make sure you do it. <laughs> I write out everything that I need to do that week in like a single section and then I will dish it out each day as it comes and then I can like cross off what I've done or move it over to the next day if I don't get it done that day. I just suggest don't give yourself too much work to do. Give yourself a manageable amount of work to do. Give yourself a pat on the back each time you complete a single task. So write something down even if it's little say oh I need to Write an Instagram caption for a picture today. Write that down when you've done it, tick it off, that's something you've done. If you're in a position where you're a little bit further along and you're being offered work, definitely think about how much time is gonna go into this work and if you have the time for it because there's been a few times where I've accepted work that I don't have the time for. It's a racing game to get it finished and you don't love what you're creating because you're rushing it. To round up, don't give yourself too much to do. Take it slowly, day by day. Don't look at everything that you have to do for that week. Just focus on today. What can you do today? And then move on to the next day. Just take it slow. Don't overbook yourself. And if you're feeling unmotivated, just start. I know that starting is the hardest bit, but if you just do that, you're making small steps. Just don't pressure yourself too much. Just start, say, okay, no pressure. Just gonna doodle or just gonna start writing the email, you know, whatever it is you have to do, just start it without pressuring yourself too much. There's another question here which is similar, how do I motivate myself to ensure that I hit my deadlines? Again, it's just about forcing yourself to start it so that you can get it done. <laughs> sometimes I don't hit my deadlines, sometimes I have to ask for like a day or two extra, um, or if it's a Friday I'll say can I have the weekend, and a lot of the times with like my videos I'll just send whoever the sponsorship is for the sponsorship part because I don't have the whole video ready. So it's, it's a lot of trial and error. I haven't done any client work with traditional art so I haven't had to motivate myself in that sense um, because it's a lot easier to start digital artwork. So you just have to make sure you're giving yourself enough time to do it and just start as early as you can. And that way, once you've started, it's easier to keep going, I find. There's a lot of questions about products. Like, what do you find sells the best? What was the first product I sold? And how did you decide what products to start with? Stickers, I always suggest going with stickers. Everyone loves stickers. They're easy to sell, they're easy to ship, they're cheap to send. Maybe some small prints, but prints is definitely more of a step up if you're making your own prints because that's, it's not very, it's not an easy task to get used to a printer and know what you're doing unless you're outsourcing your prints, which is obviously a lot easier, but you still have to pack them and ship them. And if they're a bit bigger, that can be a little bit of a faff with the weighing and everything. So I would definitely recommend starting with stickers. If you're not a sticker person, maybe cards. Etsy is a huge place for greetings cards and little gifts and stuff like that for people so gift cards are a really great 
way to start on Etsy, I think, as well. I personally started selling stickers, prints, and I had a zine in there too, and a couple sticker sheets, because uh, I prepared for like a year in advance before I opened my shop, which obviously you don't have to do. Another thing is people say that you should start on Etsy with like 20 products. I would say if you're starting out and you don't really know what you're doing, I would say maybe like 10 to 15 products just so you can get the hang of what you're doing and manage everything. How do you know when is the right time to open your shop? I think if you've got people asking you if you're going to be selling your work, that's probably um, a good sign. <laughs> I had people telling me that they wanted to buy my work and that I should open a shop, so I did. I built up a following for myself on Instagram over a few years and it was the people who were following me who were saying that they wanted me to open a shop and sell my work. It was a scary decision to make, but I feel like you know when you know if you don't have a following you can still open a shop, it's it's not, there's no rules to it. I'm just saying that you'll have an easier time if people already want your work, you know what I'm trying to say? Um, moving on from that, I also have a lot of questions about growing your Instagram account. Now, I wanted to talk about this because I get so many questions on this topic. I'm not a guru, I don't, I'm not, I don't have any secrets for you, I can just give you the advice that I used. Um, there's no magic way to grow a following. I'm not, a, I don't have a huge following, but I have a, a good following. So my best piece of advice for growing your Instagram account is you wanna start with good quality content. So nice pictures or digital work, which you don't need to take pictures of, that's bright and light and good quality. If you're struggling to take pictures for Instagram, they're a bit dark or crainy, wait until the light's out, daytime. Don't take pictures when it's dark. Don't take pictures when the sun's going down. Don't take pictures when the sun's coming up. Take pictures in the middle of the day when the sun is out and the sky is clear and there's no harsh lighting, like now. Lighten it up a bit, put up the contrast a little bit, maybe a little bit of saturation. There's some great apps out there that you can upload your pictures to before you put it on Instagram so you can see how they all look together. I use one called Preview. The picture thing also goes into product pictures. I do the same thing for all my pictures. I have my desk in front of my window. I wait till this time of day and then I just take pictures in the daylight with no lights. I'll turn this off, my main light, because it's like a, it's got a warm tone and it gets rid of any glare or my shadow that might be on the desk. Edit it a bit, make it look bright and light and colourful, if colourful is your thing. Unless you have really great studio lights, I really wouldn't recommend taking pictures under lights. I would just use the sun. Just popping in with a little tip. If you hold something plain white against the sun, can you see the reflection on the desk? It gives you so much more light and it reflects the light back onto it. So if you've got like a shadow at the bottom or it's not quite as light down here because it's not as close to the window. Do you see that? Look at, watch that. Look at the light. <laughs> also learned that from catnip. Did you go to college or uni? I went to college, which is like high school in America. So I went to college here. I did art and design for my first year and my third year. Hated it. <laughs> uh, my teachers completely destroyed my love for art during those times. I didn't have a, gr a great time. The only thing that was good is that I, I made a friend in that class who introduced me to the world of developing your own characters and your own style. And I had no idea about all of this. And then that's that's when I started my Instagram account and I started making my own characters and developing a style and finding all these other artists out there who like were into cosplay and they were drawing anime characters and game characters. And I was like, oh, this is awesome. This is so different from what I've been like looking at in class and everything. And it was an amazing new world to me that just opened up out of nowhere on my phone. And I was like, wow, this is great. Um, so that's, the, that's kind of the only good thing that came out of college to be honest is that I probably wouldn't be doing this now if I didn't meet that girl in my class. If you're asking if my qualifications have helped me in any way as an artist, the answer is no. I have not needed to tell anyone what qualifications I might have. I think all people need to know about you, future clients that you may have, or people that want to work with you, all they need to know is your style, your work, and the fact that you can produce that work for them on time. There's a few questions saying, how did I get started? 
well i've been drawing my whole life i've always enjoyed art uh then like i said i went to college and it kind of destroyed my motivation for it a little bit i didn't pick up a pencil for about two years after i left college just went and got some jobs i worked in a nightclub and then i worked in a hotel which obviously i've just quit so after i left college i kind of took a break and i just slowly started getting back into it again i don't really remember how it happened i was just kind of like i miss it so i just started doodling and then it kind of just my passion started growing and growing and i started finding more people who styled really resonated with me and then it moved on to like youtube and all the studio vlogs and i was like wow this is such a cool world um so yeah i guess how it started is i've always been creative my mother's an artist my sister's an artist i've always been drawing and I just started posting my work on Instagram as regularly as I could. I think I've, I've stuck on like 600 followers for years, I think, before I finally managed to figure out my own style. So growing your Instagram account, let me backtrack a little bit. The pictures are obviously the main thing. Your posts are what get you out there. You want to try and upload decent or high quality content uh, as often as you can. I wouldn't suggest every day because that's a lot and you don't want to burn yourself out before you've already started. I would suggest just uploading as regularly as you can, the best content that you can, and you want to put yourself out there. You want to make friends, you want to communicate with people, you want to comment on other people's work, share their work, tell them you love it, make friends, join communities, do drawing challenges. A lot of people I know found their following through like doing daily drawing challenges. Like every October when a lot of artists are doing Inktober, we all get kind of an influx of followers because our work's kind of everywhere and you see it and you're like, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Leah Lexon, for example, I found her when she was doing her year daily drawing challenge. She was drawing every day for a year and I think a lot of people found her that way. Just be involved in the community and make friends and just be a part of it and you will get the same support back if you give it out if that makes sense like i said there's no magic trick you just you want a style you want a consistent style you don't want to be posting like art and personal stuff in my opinion because people will find you for your art and stay for that rather than if they find you for your art and you've also got like dog pictures and cooking pictures and selfies everyone's gonna be like oh i don't know because i want to see the art i'm not really interested in the baking and the dogs if you want an account specifically for your art just like art and everything that goes around that another thing that makes it tricky to find your following or once someone visits your profile get them to kind of stay and more is the consistency of your style for example if i were to see a drawing of a style which i really loved and the colors were amazing and it was like totally up my street and then i went onto their profile and like that was only like one of four of their styles and then they've got like realistic paintings on there as well and like skyscraper drawings in a biro pen and it's like well i'm not really here for that basically if your if your style is not consistent you're gonna reach you're gonna reach lots of different people who are only gonna be there for one thing and you want to have people there for all of your work if you know what i mean it's like making a youtube channel it's it's hard to make a youtube channel covering multiple different topics because you're going to reach out to so many different people but each video you upload on that topic you're only going to get a small percentage of your audience watching that because they're only there for that if that makes sense so work on your style the most and the best way i can help you with that is um i get a lot of questions about how to develop a style and there is again there is no magic answer you just have to draw a lot and look at references and study other people's work who you love don't copy just inspire take aspects that you like and combine it with like other aspects that you like from other people's work no one has a style okay right everyone has a style but no one has a style because everyone's style is based off of someone else's style <laughs> and at the same time our style constantly changes and grows with us as we change and grow like my style last year i wouldn't say is the same as my style this year even though they look the same my best piece of advice really is to just draw a lot draw what you love to draw use the colors that you love to use look at other artists who inspire you and see what it is about their work that you like and try and incorporate aspects for really really beginners who don't know even how to start trying to find a style find artists who you love and maybe do some studies from their work 
do lots of sketches, see how their hand moves, the way they're drawing, and eventually you'll be able to incorporate that style into yours as you go. I just, just want to stress that copying is not the same as taking inspiration. Don't just take a piece of their work and go, okay, I like the background, I'm going to use that. Just go, which part of the background do I like? And maybe I'll put that in the foreground. Or maybe I can look at the way that this artist uses colour and use similar palettes or use the same palette as a practice. Someone said, is there a specific time you like to work? Uh, yes, the night time. I find it really hard to draw in the day. Like the earlier in the day it is, the harder I find it to draw. When I'm like on my bed and I've got my iPad all like close up to me and I'm chill, I find that is the most beneficial time for me to draw something and I don't know why that is. My boyfriend said, how do you get to be so gosh darn cool? You're pretty cool too. How do you combat creative block? Oh, I've not had an art block in a while actually. Um, I find personally that trying to move back to traditional art helps me kind of get out of the rut because when I'm not feeling like drawing, everything digital I draw, I just hate. And I don't know why or what it is. I think maybe art blocks it just comes to me when I've been doing too much digital work and I'm feeling out of touch with my hands. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure, but when I have an art block, I'll just kind of take a break, don't push myself too much, and then whenever I feel like I might be reaching a point again where I can draw something, I'll just pick up a sketchbook and a pencil, just do some doodles and see what happens. Every art block I've had, I've eventually gotten through. So that, that helps me a lot. If I have work I have to do, I just do it. If it's not personal, the joy, it's not, like, it's not the same when you're doing work. Your personal work for yourself is when you're doing client work for someone else or any kind of illustrative work for someone else. It's a different relationship with you and the work. So I don't find it as difficult to work on it if I'm not feeling motivated, if that makes sense. To round up, don't don't push yourself if you don't feel like drawing don't just take a break it will come back eventually take it slow just do little doodles if you're still not feeling it put it down you know take a break maybe go on pinterest or instagram and look at some inspiration about like, oh yeah these are the kind of ideas i'm gonna have for when i want to draw again um i find that art block can be a good time to think about like where your art is going next and why you're not enjoying it right now, if there's a specific reason for that, or if you're just burnt out and that you need a break, or if you need or if you need to reevaluate the art that you're making and the reason why you're not enjoying it. Would you consider getting a cricket or a silhouette instead of outsourcing your stickers? No. I don't have the time. If I uh, I might even outsource my prints one day, but right now it's it's fine printing them myself. But get making your own stickers? No. <laughs> How old were you when you started selling your art? Um, well, actually, I used to do commissions digitally when I was, um, 18 or something. I've, I have been selling my work for a while, but it wasn't, wasn't as intense as it is now. Uh, I was just doing commissions for, like, random people who found me on Instagram or, like, my friends or mutual friends. So I guess I was, like, 17 or 18 when I properly started selling my work. Um, but actually selling products and prints of my work, it was only last year, so 22. Just popping in here quick, because I'm editing this video right now. Don't know what the hell I'm talking about. I turned 23 this year in April, and I opened my shop this summer. I think it was July or August. It wasn't last year. Just gonna do a couple quick ones, and then we're gonna stop, because this is getting a lot. What's the best tip you would give to someone wanting to open an Etsy shop? Just have fun. Make products you want to make. Um, do your research, look into the, the shipping and how all of that works. Etsy's pretty good, it does most of it automatically for you. Uh, you just have to like weigh everything um, just so you get an idea of how much it's going to be. I'm in the UK and I use the drop and go service at the post office so I don't personally have to weigh anything or print out shipping labels or anything like that. Uh, but I do weigh everything when I'm listing it, just so I know how much the postage will be later on. Just do it. If you want to do it and you're scared or you're not sure, I say just do it and 
tell your friends and family about it, get them to share it all around on their Facebooks and everything. Did you know you eventually wanted to be a freelance illustrator? No, I didn't. When I left college, I told myself, I was like, you know what? I don't need a career. I'll just work little jobs here and there and I'll just live my life like that. And then <laughs> I worked the little jobs and I was like, I can't live my life like this. <laughs> this is just kind of a decision I made as I went, as I started to see from other artists what you could potentially do as in like live off of having a youtube channel and a shop and a patreon that's like when i saw that when i realized that that is a potential goal that i could achieve that was my 100 percent. i'm doing that i'm all in let's get it let's do it <laughs> that would have been maybe four years ago maybe something like that which is crazy to say uh, we all have different journeys. You're gonna be more lucky if you get a big, bigger following quicker. That's just the way it is, unfortunately. Um, if you have people who like your work, who are following you, they're gonna buy your work. That's just kind of how it goes. Do you think it's more beneficial to be active on one social media platform or multiple? Um, every social media platform has a whole different audience of people on there so i do find new people through my instagram and my youtube separately i get more orders every time i upload a youtube video so i i would say yes i would say having your name out there on multiple platforms isn't gonna do any bad for you it's probably only going to help you out in the long run do you think that you generate most of your sales due to your Instagram account? 100%. I don't make many sales through Etsy actually alone. Um, yeah, it's mostly you guys who follow me on Instagram and support me and are there when I do a shop update. It would be nice to reach out a bit more to the Etsy community, but it's hard to do that with work like mine because it's very, I don't know. I don't know who is looking for this kind of work and Considering it's really just art prints and stickers, I feel like maybe one day if I made, I don't know, like cushions or something or greetings cards, maybe I would reach out to the Etsy community a bit more. But yes, for now, it's it's mainly just through through Instagram and YouTube. Right, I'm going to stop talking now because I've been filming for ages. I'm going to try and cut this down as much as I can. This is probably going to be the majority of the sustenance of this video. So um, I hope. I answered some questions. I hope I wasn't too rambling and I hope that it made sense. <laughs> okay, right. I've got two hours until my shop update. I'm going to do a little bit of editing, pack some orders because I want to get my previous orders packed before I do that. Yeah. Thank you so much for all of your questions. I did not expect so many. Good day, friends. Friday today. Didn't film yesterday. Um had a pretty chill day yesterday, I wasn't really feeling it. I had to take my car in for its MOT, that cost me a lot of money. I actually have to go and pick it up today. So I haven't spent the money yet, but it's going to cost me a lot of money for a car that I don't need because I work from home. It's, it's fine, it's fine. We are driving home. Got the car, spent a lot of money. It's fine. <laughs> Just thought I'd give you guys a little tour of the outside world from my car because you know that's as far as I go outside. Live in the countryside, you probably can't really see anything, it's just trees. There's a nice cottage coming up, you won't see it. Like I said, I spent a lot of money, but that's what happens when your car is many years old. This car was made in like 2004 or something, and I've had it for I think four years, and that's the only time it's been very expensive. Anyway, I'm home now and I will speak to you soon. Uh, <laughs> I just did a bit of video editing and sent a couple emails yesterday, that was pretty much it. Just watched a lot of YouTube and chilled out, you know, one of those days. Just popping in at the end here to end the video. But before I do, I wanted to give a little shout out to a couple friends of mine who are opening their shops and I just wanted to let you know about their work if you're interested. So the first one you might already know from Instagram, um, her handle is Eve Illustra. She makes super cute like pastel work and she actually sent me some of her stickers a little while ago now, which I'm not sure if I've shown before. And these. She made me these, which are so adorable. I haven't put them on anything yet, but I will. She wrote me a little note as well. I really recommend going over to her Instagram if you're interested. I'm not sure when her shop's opening, but I think it's the first week of December. 
The next one is Hannah Gillingham or Gillingham. She's a UK based artist such as myself. She does incredible realistic portraits and uh, I personally suggested that she should draw Bowie because I know people are going to want prints of Bowie um, and she did and it's incredible and I'm definitely going to get myself one. So she'll be opening her shop on the 4th of December um, and if you're interested definitely check it out. I know that would mean a lot to her since she's just starting out and I've been talking to her about test printing and she managed to get it pretty quickly, a lot quicker than I did so I'm very proud of her for that. <laughs> anyway, there's my little artist shout out and I'm going to end the video now like I said because it's getting long and I need to edit it so thank you so much for watching hopefully I'll see you next time and Merry Christmas because we're pretty much there bye